Hello friends, welcome back. Today is Silent Wednesday in the Holy Week. And Silent Wednesday is called Silent Wednesday because the Bible does not give us any information on what Jesus was doing this specific Wednesday. We don't know what he did. Most scholars think he just stayed in Bethany and took some rest. He was maybe tired from the busy days beforehand and preparing for what was about to come. So there's not much reading to do. Um, however, there's an interesting story about Jesus getting anointed in Bethany. And again, um, it's not entirely clear if this actually happened on this day, because the Gospels give different information. Matthew and Mark, they put it kind of in, in the scenery of what we've been reading. Uh, John says that this event took place about six days before the Passover festival. However, it's an interesting story, so let's read it. We'll read it again from the book of Mark, Mark chapter 14, verse 1 to 11. Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or they may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an albuster jar of expensive perfume, made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages, and the money given to the poor and they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly I tell you, Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Jesus is being at some sort of dinner party, at some sort of feast, invited by Simon the leper. We don't know who Simon the leper is. Probably is what uh, was somebody just from Bethany who was uh, who had leprosy, and uh, probably Jesus healed the man and became one of Jesus' friends and followers. And so there's a party going on. Uh, people are feasting and eating together, and all of a sudden there is a lady, a woman coming in. Um, John refers to her as Mary, the sister of Lazarus, and she brings a jar with an expensive perfume made of nard, nard oil. This is a very expensive, exclusive oil, a special fragrance, the most delicious aroma or perfume people could think of these days. And as we have read, it was worth a full year's wage. So this must have been a very expensive thing. This nard oil or this special perfume is also referred to in the book of Song of Songs. Um, and it was a very exclusive perfume made from some Indian plant. So for you Indians out there, you're mentioned in the Bible too, guys. Now, this woman breaks open the jar and pours the oil on Jesus' head, and John says on Jesus' feet. And as you can see, the Gospels give a bit of different information again here, but that doesn't exclude. Probably she has poured it out on his head and on his feet and maybe on his whole body and anointed him as a gift of love, as a sign of her love for Jesus. And when the disciples see this, they get annoyed. They start rebuking her. They say, well, this is a waste of money. But Jesus defends her. She said, and he says that what she did is a beautiful thing. Now, 
I could probably preach one or two sermons on this passage. It is talking about uh, Jesus and the poor being with us all the time, but Jesus is not going to be with the disciples all the time. He's about to leave. It's talking about how this perfume uh, prepares for Jesus' burial. There's lots of things we can talk about, but today I'll try and keep it short. And my question to you is, this woman gave a gift, an expression of love to Jesus, worth a full year's wage. If you love the Lord, what are you giving to the Lord to express your love to Him? Now, for some of us, we maybe do give material things. Maybe we do give um, expensive things even. Maybe we do give offerings and gifts to the church or to organizations and NGOs around the world to uh, support the kingdom where Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's wonderful. That's good. And I encourage you to keep on doing that. But sometimes giving material things is not the most difficult. Especially for us here in the West, who are well off, mostly. I think the most beautiful thing you can give to God, as an expression of your love, is your entire life. Give Him your whole being. Give Him your all. And say, Lord, here I am. Use me. I am for you. You are the one who made me, the one who created me. Now, let me be a person who lives to the glory and honor of your name. And think of ways you can do that. Think of ways how you can express your love to God. By giving yourself, by singing His praises, by living a life worthy of the Lord. There are plenty of ways. Think about it today, on this Silent Wednesday. Silent Wednesday is also called Spy Wednesday, because at the end of this event or of this day, we see that Judas is going to the chief priest to arrange the betrayal of Jesus Christ. And so the day ends on a sad note. We're going to get into the suffering more and more, leading up to Jesus' death. And we look forward already to Sunday, Easter Sunday, where we know Jesus will come back to life and resurrect. There you have a Good Wednesday, a good week, and I look forward to seeing you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.